Greetings, everyone. Well, as you can see, I'm still out of town. I'm at my sister's home in Ohio, and um, I wanna share something with you today. Normally, I wouldn't bring a message like this, but the Lord has asked me to, to share this, to bring it, and I believe the Lord is sharing a, a part of his heart for America, and just one of the things that uh, is on his heart, and it's the enemy's plan for destroying America. So uh, it's about our our current president and how he is lost in the political system's cesspool. He said he's been caught up in the storm of success and has armed the enemy's arsenal. One thing led to another and another and another. You know, and I see it as being prideful and full of lies and deceitfulness. So after so many lies and so much deceitfulness would have you. It really sears a person's conscience, okay? Now, um, I wanted to share some of his accomplishments, you know. <laughs> um, you know, at, at age 29, he became one of the youngest senators and he became Senator uh, of Delaware. And so he served there many years in 1994, under Bill Clinton, there were two laws that he drafted that were um, signed, signed into law. He drafted the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act and also Violence Against Women Act. So that was, I would say, great successes. Um, in, he ran for president unsuccessfully in 1988 and 2008. And then in 2008, he resigned from being senator so he could be running mate with uh, Obama, and of course, then served as vice president under Obama for eight years. And in 2021, he became the 46th president, and he went from being the youngest senator to being the oldest president. And of course, he was uh, the president who had the first female VP. Now, those are just a few of his accomplishments. I'm sure there's more, but I, you know, don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I want to say what the Lord is saying. Um, he's saying how he got caught up in this storm of success, and that's what armed the enemy's arsenal. And I'm sure he's not the only one, but the Lord was focusing on this today. This is what the Lord said. He said, I am a jealous God. And he said, I desire that all mankind be drawn to him by his love. You know, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So he said, hatred is my enemy. This is God's enemy. God is love. His enemy is hate. And he said, those who do not love me hate me. The enemy's plan is to destroy America through hatred one for another instead of love. He said, some get away with crimes and hateful acts, and some more than others. And you think about that in your lifetime, I'm sure you've known a lot of people that, you know, it seems like they get away with, we'd say, they get away with murder. You know, there are um, many people that it's, it just seems that way. They play by the devil's rules and by his handbook, and they turn away from God, and it seems like, you know, God lets them go. But at some point and some time, you know, he then brings them to accountability. Now, I'm going on with what the Lord said. Uh, he said that he is closing the books and calling them to make an account for all wrongdoing. Now, at that point, he named four different people in high-ranking people in government. And I am not going to name them, but he did. Um, he said, this is a spiritual cesspool, but the truth will set them free. And this will cleanse the airways. Now remember, it's the enemy only has the power that we give him through the words that we speak. We can bless or curse, or we can maim, <laughs> We can heal, but when we are spewing out, you know, there's a lot of naysaying, character assassination, 
ugly, I'm just calling this ugly discourse, name calling, a lot of hatred, but you're not seeing love. I, I don't enjoy it. I'm not even gonna go there. But anyhow, um, he said, not all will come clean. However, the truth will be revealed. See, God loves us so much. He loves the sinner. He hates the sin. And he loves us so much that he's giving people, all people, time to repent and turn to him. Now, they either do or they don't. If they don't, like you said, he's closing the book and he's calling them out. He wants people to, be, uh, to receive him. You know, when you receive him, you're going to love him. He even asked me, do I think, do I think that they will do this? Huh? I'm praying, Lord, that they do. You know, he is quick to forgive. He forgives a repentant heart. You can just say words. That doesn't mean you're really repenting. You know, I can go to a library. It doesn't make me a book. You know, we want to be born again and have, you know, we, we repent with our mouth and we receive him into our heart okay that it's a turning there's a mindset that has to change all right now let me go on here with this he said jd vance will be uh, a positive influence to the white house who will stand by trump it will be a successful run but not without opposition okay I'm not talking just about the R's and the D's or the red and the blue. I'm talking about this is America, okay? We need to be on our knees and praying for America. He said, the Lord, the Lord will clean the swamp, okay? Trump tried with success in his own efforts, okay? We can do a lot of things in our own efforts, but it's a whole lot better when the Lord does it. He said, now I will do it my way all right so the lord is going to have his way and the lord is going to clean up this political systems cesspool okay there's been too much arming the enemy and he's going to take care of this and he's giving those that are and i'm just gonna i don't like to use that term the radical left look there's a lot of radical stuff period taking place in in America and around the world. Now, as I was trying to make some notes on this, and it might come out a little bit chopped up, but I hope I make it suitable to the Lord. The Lord reminded me of something. Joe Biden is a Catholic. He says he is a practicing Catholic. And I know I have family members who are Catholic and they are so upset with some of the things that are taking place within the Catholic Church and with laws that have been passed. And it's against what the Catholic religion has always believed in. One is abortion and the other one, they have not believed in abortion, let me say it that way. And they, have, they don't approve of same-sex marriage. But we have here, currently, this administration, they, they support the L LGBTQI, they support that, they support the same-sex marriage, they support abortion, full-term abortion. In 1973, now think about this, 1973, Joe Biden opposed Roe versus Wade. What happened from that time until now? You know, inquiry minds want to know. I, I just wonder, I, I don't have a clue, but somewhere along the line, he really got off course. And you know, this is that political cesspool. But this is what the Lord reminded me of. Back in 2006, Bob and I were in New York and I heard, I was pressing Bob's shirt before we went to a meeting and I heard as clear as a bell, so to speak, the Lord said, there's a Catholic curse on the land. And I didn't have a clue what he meant. And now it took some praying and some fasting and time. And Bob and I talked about it. And one day the Lord just gave it to me. In 19, it, actually June 25th, 1962, 
that is when John F. Kennedy had the opportunity to make the decision and to veto that bill not to be sent, that, that prayer would be taken out of school. That was the Catholic curse that came on the land. And think where this nation has gone in that time. Many things have taken place. Look at all the school shootings. <laughs> Do I need to say more? Back in that time, there, there were pregnancies that took place in the high school age kids, the girls. However, today it's, I don't know, 100 times plus that. Okay, such violence that we have going on. That I believe, the Lord said it, I didn't, I never thought about. A Catholic curse was on the land. Well, there you go. John Kennedy was the first Catholic president and that brought a curse, not himself, but the fact that he didn't sign this, veto it. And then, you know, what we have going on today, our second practicing Catholic president. So, like I said, we need to be praying for all of our governmental officials. The political cesspool, political system cesspool. They are arming the enemy's camp, his arsenal. And he's bringing that against us, against our children. You know, I'm older. Who knows how long I have yet here, but I've got grandbabies. They're the next and the next generation. And the same thing for you. Where has this nation gone? It's getting sucked up, swallowed up into that cesspool. So we need to do all that we can. And we need to pray that the next occupant of the Oval Office do the right thing, okay? They need to be in alignment with what God wants, not what we want, not our flesh, but seek him, seek his face. And the Lord said he's going to do it his way. Donald Trump was cleaning up the swamp his own way, but now the Lord, he's opening his book. He's giving people, these politicians, he's given all of us time to repent and turn to him. I want my book. I want it to be clean. I want to have a clean slate with the Lord. Okay. All right. I, like I said, this is a message I probably would not bring, but the Lord has asked me to do it. So I pray that it gives honor to the Lord. And I pray that it gives you some understanding and that, you know, God wants, he loves us. We were made in his image. All of us, all of us. He loves the sinner. He hates the sin. The enemy's plan is to destroy this nation through hatred. Oh my goodness. What did I see the other day? President or Prime Minister Netanyahu is in New York. Look what they're doing in our own nation. It's grievous. God loves all people. And if you love God, then you must love all people as well. Okay? Stand your ground. Pray. For our leaders. If you've never prayed before, I, I don't want to say beg, but I'm asking you with a sincere heart, pray for our leaders. Pray for all of them. You don't have to like them, but we need to have that element of God's love in our heart that we will cry out to God for their salvation, for them to turn to God. All right? All right. Till next time, be blessed.